All right, when I call your name, step forward. Pinocchio, the puppet. Uh, I'm not a puppet, I'm a real boy. Sort of mid-discovery of the show was uh, John Tartaglia as Pinocchio. I knew from early days that there were gonna be some puppets in Shrek, but I didn't know how many, because we hadn't really developed how, how much each character needed to talk or what the costumes were gonna look like. So I'd always had it in my mind that Johnny would be a great commodity for the show, but I was never quite sure how. Um, and then, as a puppeteer, of course that's, and I thought if there were puppet characters for him to play. But then it became really clear, wait, there's Pinocchio, we need a funny, crazy actor to play him, someone that everyone loves and wants to win. And how cool that a puppeteer is playing a puppet. It's funny to look back and look at my time with the Muppets and look at my time with Johnny and the Sprites and look at my time with Avenue Q and, and everything. And it all kind of combined into um, this this track that I get to do every night that kind of does the, I hope, to, I hope it's the best of what I do. Well, Johnny, Johnny Tartaglia and I have worked together in many benefits. like left and right, left and right, and uh, so we've never actually worked together except on his show, Johnny and the Sprites, where I was Make a Mess Troll. And, uh, but uh, we've always admired each other's work, and, uh, and so to, to be able to work with him actually, and he's a friend before we even started working together, so it's really fun working it through friends. Well, my daughter's seven years old. I said, great, guess what Daddy's gonna be doing? He's gonna be doing a new show. It's called Shrek the Musical. Guess what part I'm playing? She said, Pinocchio? And I said, no, I'm going to be playing Shrek. She goes, why can't it be Pinocchio? <laughs> I said, well, John Tartaglia got that part, so. You know, I think, I think that whenever you play a character that's already beloved, you, you face that challenge of what you're going to bring to it that's unique and what people know of it. David Lindsay Abair, our brilliant book writer, you know, he, he gave my character such great darkness, I guess. I, I decided that, okay, Pinocchio's really got a dark side, you know, and, and then we even talked about, you know, where in their stories are they? You know, has Pinocchio turned into a real boy? And if he did, why is he back being a puppet again? What's great about the Pinocchio character, and Johnny was on it from the very beginning, is Pinocchio goes through a similar process that Shrek goes through. And so, they're the fairy tale creatures. How do they function in the story? Well, they have to be a reflection of, of your protagonist's journey. So, like Shrek, they've all been judged on outward appearances, or because they're freakish, they've been evicted from Duloc. And Pinocchio, in particular, is a character who is in total den denial about who he is, um, or pretending to be something different. Um, so in the course of the show, he has to embrace his inner and outer freak and say, this is who I am, and I'm, I'm powerful and special because of who I am. And that's exactly what Shrek goes on. It's exactly the journey that Fiona goes on. Yes! It all makes sense now. We may be freaks, but we're freaks with teeth and claws and magic wands, and together An audience coming in to have something that they're familiar with. I think that you know, if, if people came in and Pinocchio sounded like Barry White, that would probably throw them off a little bit, you know. So, I knew I wanted him to have a falsetto-y kind of voice and a high voice. And then the one thing I get asked all the time is about the accent, the Southern accent, which, you know, I want to be all like deep and profound, but really, it's like, well, he's made of hickory, that's why. And the wood's from Tennessee, and it was shipped over to Italy. It happens. So that's really, it's pitiful. I try to put in a lot of physical stuff. I think that I try to act like a puppet. I try to walk like a puppet. I think like a puppet. So I, I hope that that comes through. So with Johnny coming into the show, I was very lucky to have not only a great actor in that funny part, but someone who could also puppeteer the dragon and, and help us supervise the way that the puppets were manipulated and portrayed. Uh, you know, he, the whole dragon thing was like one of those, oh yeah, we don't have anyone to do the dragon. I was like, no, no, you knew all along. You knew all along <laughs> you were gonna put me in there. Both as an actor and as a professional puppeteer, his contribution to the show is, is quite comprehensive, probably in a way that people don't even realize because a lot of what he's done as with classic puppetry isn't actually seen. Check this out. Well, I start the show um, as Pinocchio. Um, when everyone's being called to places, I'm getting dressed as Pinocchio. And I come on for Story of My Life, which is our first song. Um, and as soon as Story of My Life is over and we do the goodbye song, I run off stage, drop everything, and I run up four flights. I get upstairs and I change into a black outfit and they glue 28 motion capture dots on my face and four more on a headband I wear. And I, this all happens by the way in like three and a half minutes, it's not a lot of time. 
And um, and then I go right into the magic mirror scene. It's time for you to play Duloc's fastest growing date show sensation. This is your watch. <laughs> I come down here and I uh, then go back downstairs and do the travel song, uh, which I, I do Puss in Boots and the travel song. Then I run back here again and I put on a harness and a hard hat, go back down the stage and I do the dragon number. And then I run uh, back upstairs, I do the second scene with the magic mirror. And then I come back down here and I take off the dots and change back into Pinocchio and put everything back on for Pinocchio and then finish the show. I like that, I like I like keeping busy. I, I, I'm not one of those people who likes to sit backstage for an hour and do nothing, it drives me crazy, so. I think it's really neat because this show kind of allows me to do literally everything I do. Oh, that's kind of ridiculous that I'm playing not only a puppet, but like probably the most famous puppet in the world. So it was, it was, it was kind of a cool, uh, I still look at it and I kind of go every day. Oh yeah, that's, I'm playing this kind of, you know, uh, iconic symbol. And, and it's, it's neat, it's a fun thing to be able to do. I'm wood, I'm good, get used to it! Ah!